This is the fifth video in a series covering the theory behind x86 buffer overflows, how they work, and how they can be exploited. Last time, we used a cyclical pattern to determine the return address offset on our target application, allowing us to control the EIP. In this video, we'll look at how we can find what extra space is available to us, as that may come in handy later. So, we can reliably overwrite the return address and control the EIP by using a payload of 2006 bytes. Now, 2006 bytes will be plenty for us to use this space for our shellcode, as a typical reverse shell is about 3 to 400 bytes. But this won't always be the case. In some circumstances, we may only need a small payload to overflow the buffer, not giving us enough space to place our code. Alternatively, there may not be any CPU registers pointing to any of our payload meaning it may be challenging to get there. Both these issues could be solved with finding some extra space that we can write to. We may actually be able to include some data after the return address included in our payload, which will overflow into any of the current frame's parameters and into other stack frames. Do bear in mind that dependent on what data we overwrite here, we could break other things and cause unexpected crashes. So we need to find out how much space after the return address we can safely write to while still triggering our controlled crash. This could open up more space for us to use, as well as potentially allowing us to write to an address that one of the registers is pointing to, which will come in handy later. We used a similar script to before, all that we've changed here is the payload. We specified how much space we want to try and write to after the return address, and we'll try for 500 bytes as that will give us plenty of space for any shellcode. Then we just have the placeholder for the return address filled with Bs, and we specify our offset of 2006 bytes. We then build our payload with our prefix, 2006 bytes, our return address placeholder, and finally we append our space filler, being 500 bytes to C. Let's load up Volant over in Immunity and press F9 to run it. And we can send our payload. Great, the application is still crashed with our return address being written to the EIP. So this won't always be the case. If not, Try with the smaller space filler size in the script. If you're in the stack, we can see our A's filling up the buffer, our B's overwriting the return address, and the start of our C's to help us see how much space we have. We could calculate the length manually to ensure all 500 bytes are there, but if we double click the address here, it will show the other addresses as an offset from this point. So we can scroll down to the end of the C's, and we can see that it ends with plus one F4 which is hex for plus 500. Great, all of our C's are present in memory here, so we know that we have at least 500 bytes available after the return address that we can write to without breaking the overflow. So process here will need to be rerun with the filler size adjusted in the script to get a good idea of how much space we have. And do bear in mind that even a few bytes can come in handy, as it can allow us to place a stager there to jump elsewhere. In this video, We've looked at a basic method for checking if we have extra space writable to us after the return address and why that might be helpful. In the next video, we'll cover bad characters, what they are and how to find them. Thanks for watching.